Hey, hey, here we go with lesson number nine of the straight line chapter. And this lesson here, medians, is quite exciting because all of these that we have done, a lot of these bits you may have covered when we were in National 5, or some of them are easy to work out, such as midpoints. But medians is something that's fairly new and we haven't done before. You can almost feel Connor's excitement from here. So medians, what is a median? First of all, well, if you think back to first year, second year, and so on, when we were looking at averages, we dealt with the mean, the median, the mode, the range as well, we were looking at that. But the median, what was the median? Well, the median was when you put the numbers in order and you took the one that's in the middle. It kind of applies here in the sense it's the middle. A median is when you have a triangle and you've got a line that goes from a vertex, a point on the triangle, to the midpoint, to the middle of the opposite side. A triangle will have three medians. For example, with this wee picture here, you, there is a triangle, and from this point here, you can see that black dotted line goes down to this uh, midpoint of the side. You can see that the line that goes from this vertex here goes across to the midpoint on this side. And you can see that the line from this vertex goes across to the midpoint of that side. What do you all notice, also notice about them? Yes, they all meet in the middle of this triangle at a certain point. And it says here, note, the point that all three lines meet is called the centroid. Sounds very American, the centroid. But that is where they all meet. So let's say you've got this triangle ABC, and we're going to have a median drawn in as well. So we've got a triangle ABC, that is the vertices, and we've got this uh, median here that goes from B across to D. So D, because it's a median, it means it's the midpoint of this side. So AD is going to be the same length as DC. And as it says there, D is the midpoint of AC. Okay. How would you go about finding then that um, median, the equation of the median? How would you do it? So in this example, to find the equation of the median from B, really there's three different steps that you have to go through. First thing you need to do is, well, if it's a median, it's going to the midpoint of the opposite side. So you need to work out that midpoint. You need to know what that is. And we did that just in the last lesson. So you can easily work out the midpoint if you're given the vertices, if you know them. After that, again, think, how would you get the equation of that line? What do you need? You should, in your head, be sinking a uh, gradient point equation or saying it singing it doesn't matter but gradient point equation is what you're thinking so you need to know the gradient and to get the gradient you need to know two points but you would know them if you know the vertices and then you know that point d because you've worked it out you could then work out the gradient of the line b d from there you can then uh, work out the equation of that line because you've got gradient point equation so you can sub them into y minus b equals m bracket x minus a. I'll do one example of these then and then let you try some of them. So example one, find the equation of the median from L to Km in the triangle with vertices K, L and M. A lot of the time when I am doing these questions I like to just do a small sketch of a triangle. Don't be too worried about where the points are. It doesn't have to be on uh, graph paper. It doesn't have to be drawn out brilliantly. Just draw a sketch of a triangle, put in K, L and M, and then draw in the median that it's saying. This is a median from L, which means it's going from L to the midpoint of the opposite side. Don't worry as well about the coordinates, about the positioning of them. Just do a wee uh, diagram to show where they are, and it helps you with what you want. So you can see from here, because it's going from L, you need to know the midpoint here. You need to know the midpoint of Km. So doing this to get the midpoint of Km, you're wanting to use point K and point M, and you want to work out the midpoint. So to do that, remember, you can add the x values together. So 3 add 7 and then half them. And then for the y's, do 7 add 3 
and then half them and doing that that will just give you the point five five so you know that point in the middle of km is going to be five five from there again think gradient point equation you don't know the gradient but you do know the point we know the point five five i suppose you also know the point l but you need to know the gradient so to get the gradient of this black dotted line then you've got L, you've got that midpoint. So using the midpoint and L, so this time we're wanting to use L, whoops, and you're wanting to use that midpoint, and you can easily get the gradient from that by subbing it into Y2 take Y1 over X2 take X1. So from there, Y2 take Y1, you've got five take away negative five over five take away negative one, which will give you 10 over six. Just simplify it if you can, so 10 over 6 would just become 5 thirds. You're probably best leaving it as a fraction because it will make the next bit easier rather than putting it into a decimal where you have to multiply by decimals and then you're adding decimals or subtracting and so on. It's best just leaving it as a fraction here. But you want to get the equation of the median, so gradient point equation. You know the uh, gradient. We've got it here, we've got the 5 thirds. You know the point, you could either use that 5, 5, or you could use that point L. It doesn't matter which point you use because they both lie on the line. Just don't use K or M because they do not lie on that black line. So again, gradient point equation. You do have the gradient, you do have the point, so you can work out the equation. So Y minus B equals M bracket X minus A. I'm just using this point 5, 5. I tend to ignore the negatives um, and ignore the bigger numbers. So I'm just going to use 5, 5. So Y minus B, B is going to be 5. So Y minus 5 equals M, which is the gradient. That's 5 thirds bracket X take away 5. From there, now you've got the fraction, unless you're Freddy, you hate fractions, so you want to get rid of that, so you can move the 3 over to the other side, so it becomes 3 times y take away 5 would equal 5 bracket x take away 5. Multiply the brackets, so 3y minus 15 would equal 5x minus 25, and you really want to get y equals, or something y equals, if you move that 15 over, it become add 15, or add 15 to both sides, you would end up with 3y equals 5x minus 10. And that's your answer. You could go further and you could divide everything by 3. So y would equal 5 thirds x minus 10 over 3. Or you could move everything to one side. It doesn't matter which way you leave it, um, as long as you're getting something in that form. One word that you might come across when you're working through these is the word concurrent. And any number of lines are said to be concurrent if there is a point through which they all pass. We haven't covered all these bits yet, but we will be getting on to them. But for three lines to be concurrent, they must all pass through a single point. These medians that we just looked at, we found out on the first page that there was a centroid. It's a point that they all pass. Whenever you draw a triangle and draw in the medians, all three lines will pass through that point. It's the same with altitudes, which we've not done yet, perpendicular bisectors, and then angle bisectors as well. Okay, but if it's asking you if something is concurrent, it just means do they all pass through the same point. Give these a shot anyway. Try working out the median of different uh, triangles on page 220. It's questions one to four. Think about how well you're getting on with this. Let me know if you need a hand, but good luck. Connor, you still excited? Yeah. yeah.